So now y'all come into my kitchen. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome to cooking today. Happy Wednesday to you. Happy fall, isn't it the best? I think I say that every time um, because I really just love it so much. Today, I am making chicken fried steak with a really delicious seasoning in our flour, which then transfers over into the pan, which then transfers into, it just infuses our pan gravy that we're gonna make. It is just delicious. I absolutely love this recipe and it is a hit at my house. I'm actually making this recipe today for two men in my life. One, my number one man, Sam Hannon, who absolutely loves this. This is comfort food to the max. It is his all-time favorite. His love language is any kind of dredged meat like this one that's pan fried with some gravy with some mashed potatoes and greens. And I've got all that going today. It is comfort food, it's delicious. The other man, you might wonder, <laughs> is my friend, Chris Yates. He is a friend of ours that Sam and I met years ago on a trip when we went to Israel to visit. And he has all but begged on Facebook for me to make chicken fried steak. As a matter of fact, I might even put it into the heckling, into the heckling category. He is heckling me to please, please, please make chicken fried steak on cooking today. So Chris Yates, chicken fried steak. You can just let up and it's good and I hope that you'll make it at home because it is really delicious. Get a little Southern up there in New Jersey. You're gonna love it. Okay, so it's really easy. There's a lot of prep that you need to kind of get your stations in order. We've dredged and fried in here before. You need to be really prepared and have really thought about everything. So we're gonna start with cube steaks. So I have four cube steaks and they've already been pounded out until um, they're about somewhere between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch thick. I have pounded these so thin before that you almost can't work with them. And I think that's a little bit of a headache. And so I would not pound them so thin that they just fall to pieces because they're not gonna fry very well and they're gonna be really hard to do in your dredging stations. So, you know, one of the things that I can't live without is my metal sheet pan with my metal rack. We use it all the time on here and I just have these laid out and I am salt, salting and peppering both sides of the meat because we want there to be a really good, good, good seasoning on these. You know, I just think about chicken fried steak and you want it to be salty. You know, you just, you're counting on it. When you take that first bite and you break through that little crust on the outside and you get into the meat and you get that gravy, you're wanting salt, aren't you? You know what I mean? And so we wanna be sure that we season all of our steps. So, we're gonna salt both sides of our meat and then we're just gonna let it hang out right here for a second while we create our little dredging stations. Here we go. Look how easy this is. Okay, how about that? Now, I'm just gonna set those ahead right there. And I've already seasoned, so I'm gonna scoot these back there. Now, dredging stations. You know, one of the things we're doing is we're creating this little batter on the outside of our cube steak. And, you know, let me go, let me, let me pause here. You can use other cuts of meat if you'd like. You can use like a sirloin and you can hammer it out with your meat mallet. Whatever it is that you would like to do, you can absolutely do this exact same technique, this same dredge, this same seasoning. Everything about this with chicken. If you want to do chicken fried chicken, we've already had a conversation in here about how much we love chicken fried chicken. So I would say chicken fried anything is, you know, bound to be a winner. So just know that different kind of meat, chicken, a pork chop, whatever it is that you would like, you can do it. So, our, but I'm choosing cube steak today, so that's going to camp out for a second. Then I use pie dishes. I have a couple of these. I have them from Unimaze. They're enamel. They're super, super, super durable. They're easy to clean. They go in the dishwasher and they're shallow, but have some sides so that I can kind of work in here. So what I'm doing is adding flour to one of my dredging stations. 
And then I'm doing brown sugar, which is such a fun bite, especially when it's in the gravy. When that gravy is salty and a little greasy and good, and you get a little sweet in there, oh, it's like magic. Salt, of course, a couple of teaspoons of salt. And then I'm adding into my dredge chili powder and a little bit of garlic powder or granulated garlic. I actually use granulated garlic. It's just a little bit of a different texture. And then finally, we're doing just a little bit of baking powder in there, which will sort of help our um, crust, our little batter, kind of puff up just the littlest. Okay, so that's dredging station number one. So I'm gonna take my fork and make sure that we are all combined really, really well. Mm -mm -mm. Now, here's another thing that you're gonna wanna do. You can take out a couple of tablespoons of this, like about a third of a cup, and we're gonna use it in our gravy. So I'm gonna reserve a little bit of this so that we can add it into our pan at the end and kind of carry those flavors over into our gravy. Okay, that is stirred. Our cube steak is hanging out. When we come back, we're gonna make our other dredging station and we're gonna get going. This is cooking today. Hi, welcome back to Cooking Today. I'm making chicken fried steak today. We have our cube steak hanging out salted and peppered and waiting in the wings. We've made a, we've seasoned up some good flour for one of our dredging stations that has chili powder and garlic powder and brown sugar in it and some good salt. And that's gonna hang out. And now we're doing our liquid station. Two eggs and a little bit of milk. The eggs kind of help it stick like a bind. And then, I've got some greens cooking on the stove. We've made those here before last season, I believe. You can also get the recipe for those greens in my cookbook um, that's available November 14th. <laughs> it's, they're really good, y'all. They're like brown sugar and bacon. Some onions in there, some red pepper flakes. They're delicious greens. I've got those cooking down over there because we like a little dollop of those right on the top and we should be good to go. Now, I have a cast iron skillet back here. I've got a big boy. It's my, it's my four, like my 12 inch one. And I'm gonna put about a half a cup of vegetable oil. I usually use like a canola, just in the bottom. Just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. I had to do just a little bit more than my half cup, but whatever. It just needs to cover the bottom of the pan, maybe about by half of an inch or so. So yeah, I think we're good on that. And then I also have a little bit of butter waiting in the wings so that when we get that oil kind of shimmering, you want to see it start to shimmer and have a little action. We're on medium low. Then we're going to add that butter in and let it sizzle a minute just before we put in our, our steaks that we've dredged. But we're going to watch this. Now, here's the thing to me. You can always turn up the heat on your cast iron skillet, but it's really hard once a cast iron skillet gets really hot to turn it back down. So I like to start on my dial, you know, was one to 10. I start on a four. That's about where I start uh, my heat, about medium low, a little, little less than medium. And then I kind of watch it because I can always give it a little crank up, but I'm telling you, that's the beauty of cast iron. They get really, really hot. They disperse heat evenly. They'll last forever and ever and ever. But once they get hot, there's no cooling them down quick. So just kind of watch your heat, start a little low and work your way up, okay? So I have my dredging stations. And what I'm gonna do, what we wanna do first is, there's a whole thing about real professional chefs who have a dry hand and a wet hand. So you do one hand in the dry and you do one hand in the wet and then you kind of keep your hands separate. I'm so left-handed. I couldn't do this with my right hand if you, if you paid me. I can't do it. So everything I do is left-handed and then I just have to rinse it. So, you know, you just, you just do you. You do you, okay? So I've got my 
cube steak. We're going in the flour first. Okay, and I'm pressing it in. And then we're going to walk over here, transfer that guy over here into this liquid mixture. And then we're going to let that drip off a little bit. And we're going to go right back into our flour. You see that? And then we're going to flip it and flip it and flip it. And I like to take piles of this rub. I say rub because it's so seasoned, but it's really just seasoned flour. Feels like it, it tastes like a rub. Like when this thing grills up and fries in that skillet, you're going to taste that chili powder and that little bit of garlic. And it tastes like a rub. And I'm going to leave it thick on there. I'm not going to really shake it off. There's a song. And I really almost just sang it, but I'm going to try to be professional. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to shake it off. I'm going to kind of leave it big and thick and crum you know, crumbled up on top of there. So we're going to go again. We're going to do this with all four of our cube steaks. Okay. And then, I, now I'll say this. I do shake off the first little bit. Look, did you see that? Let's do this again. I press that around. Okay. And I do shake off a little bit of the first round of the flour mixture, but I don't do it on the second round. See, my fingers are getting gloppy. Real cooks would not have gloppy fingers unless they were extremely left-handed like I am. Doesn't matter, right? Okay, leaving that on there, pressing that really down and in. Okay, and then we would continue with all of our steaks, all righty? But for the sake of time, we're going to scoot this on, and I'm going to look at my oil and see how that's looking. I'm also going to stir my greens because I want to see how they're looking. And then also, you can't have chicken fried steak and pan gravy without mashed potatoes, right? So I've got some of those going too. We've made mashed potatoes on this show many times, so you can look it up in our archives. You probably know how to make mashed potatoes at home, and so you can use my recipe or your recipe or whatever. So I'm going to get all my stations cleaned up. We're going to move our steaks over to our oil, and I'm going to be watching it. I want to start to see some action. It starts to shimmer just a little bit, and then we know we're going to be ready. When we come back, we're going to fry these up. We're going to make pan gravy. Oh, it's a good day. This is cooking today. Welcome back to Cooking Today. You should smell it in here. It smells like your grandmother's house, if you ask me. It smells like fried chicken fried steak. I mean, that's what we're making. It's delicious. So, I'm going to do a little recap. I've got two in here. You know that whole thing where I said we're just going to make two and all that? I didn't mean it. We went ahead and dredged the other ones as well because you can't leave these undone. They're just too good. Plus, I have hungry cameramen and, you know, we got we to gotta taste the food to be sure that it's quality before we put it on the air, right? So, we dredged our cube steaks in seasoned flour into our liquid mixture and back into our dry mixture and I left it kind of clumpy. We put it on our sheet tray and we waited for our oil to shimmer. Then I added in a little bit of butter and let that just kind of cook around and it's going to spit a little bit because there's a little moisture in there and you know anytime there's a little bit of a water content that hits oil it's going to spit but it doesn't do it very long. Stirred that all around and then carefully I'm cooking two both, I mean, all four of our chicken fried steaks on both sides. You want to cook them about four or five minutes each side until they get a beautiful color. I use this really long turner and a fork because it's spitting a little bit and I don't want to get my hands in there. And so look at this color. It's beautiful. And then look, oh, that part right there that's dark and pretty. That is what it's supposed to look like, y'all. So what I do is I just turn them over, I let them cook for a couple of minutes on each side, and then I want, I'm want i looking for that color that I really, really want. Then I put them onto a clean sheet tray with a metal rack, okay? So these are looking good, and then here's what I do. I'm going to turn my heat off. Then I have an oven preheated to 375, and what I like to do is 
Stick the whole sheet pan in a warm oven. And what that's going to do is it's going to continue to crisp these right on the top. And then it's going to just keep cooking them through so that they're just perfect. And it keeps them nice and warm while we're making our gravy. Now, gravy is probably my favorite bite of all of this. Oh, I've stirred my greens. They look fantastic. You've got to go look up that recipe. Um, okay, so we've got our grease. So I'm running really hot water in my sink and I'm carefully just dumping out a little bit. Just a little bit. We wanna leave a couple, about a quarter of a cup or so in the bottom of our pan. You can kinda see just a little bit, okay? Sam's grandmother, Mama Grace, taught me how to make gravy. I stood with her and um, she taught me how to do this. So anytime I make gravy, I can remember the time that I stood with her in her kitchen and she showed me how to do this. So then I take a couple of tablespoons of flour. If you remembered, you can reserve out some of that flour that was seasoned and delicious from our dredge. And if not, you can just use, you know, a couple tablespoons or so of flour out of your, you know, your container. The flavor that we love, it's going to be in the pan because of the, you know, meat that we just cooked. So you don't have to worry. And then Mama Grace always took the back of a fork and then it's just stirred and stirred and stirred because you want to make this really thick. So you want to incorporate your flour into that leftover grease and scrape up those bits because the bits are the flavor that are in this gravy that are outstanding. That little bit of chili powder, that little bit of garlic, and that sweet brown sugar. Okay, and then there is, I think people are so scared of gravy, y'all. It is just a piece of cake, it's so simple. So that's all we did, right? And then I'm pouring enough milk in the bottom of my skillet. You can measure if you want, a couple of cups three or four cups maybe. But I just pour it right up until it kind of fills the bottom, comes up an inch or two, doesn't really matter. And then I just go to town with the back of my fork, breaking that up, breaking that up, mixing all of that little paste that we've created with the bits and the grease and the flour, getting that incorporated. Mama Grace taught me to make little circles and to go all the way around the outside of the pan and then what we're going to do is turn that heat on to about medium again. And what we're watching for is for it to start thickening a little bit. And you'll start to see it. So I stir with my fork. And then I let it rest a minute because I need to be able to see, is it bubbling? Is it simmering just a little bit? Because if you're constantly, you know, moving it around, you can't tell. So I'm kind of watch for it. I also think that again, remember that salty bite that we want so bad in this, in this meal? Salt. So I do a couple of good handfuls of that in there and some black pepper because you can't have gravy without black pepper all over it. And then that's it and we're just gonna stir and we're gonna watch this over medium heat. We're gonna watch this come just to a boil and then we're gonna turn it all the way down and let it simmer until it's just exactly the thickness that we want and we are gonna taste it. You wanna always taste it to be sure it's seasoned the way you want it, nice and salty. When we come back, we're gonna have gravy. We're gonna have the most beautiful chicken fried steak. We're gonna have mashed potatoes and greens. It's a beautiful plate of comfort food. This is cooking today. Oh my goodness, y'all look at all of this. Is this the best looking meal ever? I know Sam Hannon's gonna be happy. Chris Yates, I hope you're happy. And if you don't make this thing at home after all of the grief you've given me for two years, <laughs> you need to have me up there to your house and you and your wife need to fix this for us after all of that. It's delicious, everyone. We have our chicken fried steak. We have our gravy that we stirred up. Mmm, mmm. I can put gravy in a glass with a straw and just drink it straight, y'all. It's so delicious. So what I like to do, let's do a couple of scoops of mashed potatoes. And then we've got our beautiful 
chicken fried steaks, y'all, that we finished off in the oven and they got even crispier. Look how beautiful that is. Mm -mm -mm. And then, oh my goodness, I need a spoon for our gravy. We gotta hit the whole thing with gravy. The whole thing. Our mashed potatoes over our chicken fried steak y'all and you can just taste those little extra special flavors like remember i said we have the chili powder and the brown sugar that little sweet is such a surprise and it's delicious it makes it just different and special and we've cooked down these greens with a little bacon and brown sugar you can get that recipe on our website or in my cookbook we top it with some greens y'all that is some good eating right there I hope that you will try this at home and just comfort, comfort, comfort this fall. It's just the best stuff ever. This is cooking today.